So next up, all eyes on crisis hit Great Britain against the New Zealanders. Something of a contrast in fortunes between these two crews yesterday, but today it's been the Kiwis who've been uh, having to change their wing and adapt to the scenarios out there. So port entry for the British crew and Sir Ben Ainsley. And, and I apologize to Kiwi fans out there because we should have reported that they came out, but there was so much going on in that last race. We didn't even see them that uh, we didn't even see them come out through the harbor and get out on the race course. So here we go. Kiwis are out and uh, ready for action. And hold on again, folks, because this ain't going to be dull. I can guarantee you that. I think we got a vague clue about that in the first race, didn't we? Yeah, just incredible action and everybody being stress tested. Everybody and everything. You got that right. Again, I, I doubt very much we're going to see a super aggressive start, but you never know when Mr. Ainsley's involved. Well, the New Zealanders effectively got a free pass yesterday. They couldn't have asked for a, a smoother passage to a 2-0 lead in this best of nine yep, race semi-final. It everywhere. really should be theirs to lose from this position, but never say die. And certainly that is the motto of Sir Ben Ainsley. All eyes will be on their boat, their equipment. How sturdy is that repair job? How will it handle these kind of wind speeds? Not to mention the Kiwis, who now reportedly have their spare wing in. So how complete and ready is a spare wing? A spare is a spare. That is, it is what it is. So again, we're not seeing these two getting involved in hand-to-hand -hand combat in the pre-start under these sort of conditions. They are keeping their distance. Trying really, to get their timing right. There's no way the Kiwis are going to get to the starting line on time. So this is kind of like what we saw in the first race. For some reason, and we'll try to find out later, for some reason they just wanted to stay away and start behind and hold on. Timing is everything. The British across the water first up and already going at 42, 43 knots. Emirates Team New Zealand in behind them. What are you making of these early skirmishes here, Ken? They don't look terribly stable. <laughs> no, they look loose, really loose. Emirates Team New Zealand does with that fancy Xbox that Glenn Ashby is trimming the wing with and, you know, all their interesting controls. You know, maybe they get exposed a little bit today, but, but knowing the Kiwis, they have sorted this stuff out. But first, at first glimpse, they look loose and you also look at uh, BAR almost underwater rounding that mark. Yep, it's allowed the Kiwis to close the gap as they head downwind for the first time in the race. He will have the boundary. He will be able to jive off the boundary here as they get closer. Even though he jibes to port tack, he will be able to jive off the boundary. Really nice jive by Land Rover BAR off that boundary. Very, very smooth. But can they prevent those big nose dives? Those are the those are the little issues that have crept into their program from time to time. But when they get going, they get going. Look at that. A little geez, a boost to 40, but then splashing down again. Can they prevent the nose dive? That's the big issue for Land Rover BAR. He's still well out of control here, boys. Just trying to coast in and one here. Going to need to be sailing really consistently here. Land Rover BAR and Sir Ben Ainsley to hold off the challenge of the Kiwis. Wing trouble or not, they are a very impressive outfit. I think that's the voice of Burling, and I think yeah, he just said to his team via their onboard yeah. headsets, he's way out of control here, boys. Let's just hang in there. So it's interesting. If they're playing a little possum right now and, and thinking that they can force yeah, Ainsley a into a tough spot, So far, so good for the British team as they ran the bottom gate. Yeah, 
pristine conditions of a few days ago seem a world away, a different race course, a different venue even. Good boat speed from the British and the Kiwis losing plenty of theirs in the turn. It will be interesting if that was Burling, kind of, again, that playing possum. Let's, we think he's a little more out of control than us, so let's just Come hang on, in there and see what happens. You don't want to hang in there too much because all of a sudden things could be well over if you play if you if you play it a little too quietly. Let's bring in Bruno Dubois, who's the general manager of Groupama Team France. He's out on the water for us today. Uh, Bruno, and any sign of let up in the conditions out there? Is it just as crazy as it was at the start? You know what? Uh, on top of the uh, top mark there, there's a big, big cloud with a lot of rain coming in, and I'm sure the wind going to increase easily by five knots there. I can see it from here. Good call, Bruno. There's a big rain squall coming down. Usually the front side of these squalls has a little burst of speed, and right now we're seeing a peak speed at about 24 knots. These guys don't want to see a whole lot more than that, I can tell you that. And again, once they start the race, once the three-minute sequence starts within the, the wind speed range, the race is on. Well within the limit just at the moment, and the race very much on between these two. Not a huge amount of difference. So Ben Aisley getting away to a, a decent start and he's been talking up their challenge, talking up their resolve, their desire to overturn these incredibly testing, complicated conditions and all the technological problems that they've had. Ainsley sailing in a little higher mode, a little higher and slower mode than Emirates Team New Zealand right now, a little closer to the wind, trying to get up in online so if he does have a slow tack, he's not exposed on port tack. does have that, again, that boundary protection, but I'm not so sure he wouldn't be on port tack long enough this time that it wouldn't help him. So he needs to tack and get across, I believe. You can see the rain starting to come. Well, these are conditions, no doubt, that many of the British will be very familiar with. <laughs> you can see that it had a pretty good tack, just enough to get across. They need this race. Whether it's pouring rain or blowing like crazy or whatever the whatever the condition, you're right. Maybe maybe the British have a little bit of an advantage in rainy. Hey, look, it rains a lot in Auckland too. Let me tell you. Oh, fair point. Fair <laughs> point. We can't even see the top of the course right now in this little rain squall from our booth, so we are glued to the monitor just like everybody else. Arguably the toughest challenge of his long and illustrious career, Sir Ben Ainsley. Of course, he masterminded, helped mastermind the recovery for Oracle Team USA in the last cup four years ago. Having to dig deep and draw on those sorts of experiences right here, right now, on the great sound of Bermuda. 40 knots of speed, rounding gate three, and the Kiwis at the moment chasing, chasing all the time. Just an, a mere pedestrian 45 for the Kiwis going around that mark. Looking a little happier about their progress at the moment. Well, just it's interesting that there's no splits. There's no splits in any gate right now. Both teams are literally waiting for the other to make a mistake. It's it's really that simple. Tell you what. Brits look fine. I mean, they're going quick. They look fine. They're keeping about the same distance ahead. Sound pretty composed on both boats. That's the shocking part. I mean, here they are hurtling through the water at speeds we've never seen and not a bit of tension. Not a great jive there. Not a great jive from Ainsley. Quick one, boys. Quick one before you come. Quick one. Look at that, half the distance gone on one slow job. Still a boat race. So both these teams having to adapt and adjust to problems thrown their way. Bit of a nosedive from the Kiwis, popping up back out onto the foils again. And you can just see that it is not a stable arrangement right now. 
Now, you think back to a couple of days ago when the wind speeds were only at 14, 15 knots, and those two hulls were pretty much parallel for the entirety of the race, and they raced on the foils 100% of the time, didn't they, a few days back? Nice and clean, very precise. I think most people are saying, why, if it's so windy, why can't you stay up 100% of the time now? Well, it's that instability that you're talking about. It's just, you're just holding on right now. Again, Ainsley's got to keep those bows from plugging if he can. Just slowed up again. Both hulls going pretty deep in the water for a while there, and there's the difference. Look at the Kiwis. There's a 12 knot speed difference going around that mark, so. Yeah, you can take it cautious from time to time, but you better be prepared for that lead to get chewed up if you make another mistake like that. Can you believe it? These guys are going around the course at 43 boat lengths apart. Another word with Bruno Dubois out on the water for us, general manager of Groupama Team France. Uh, Bruno, from from the perspective of a general manager, if you had had wing trouble in the way that the British did yesterday, and indeed it, the Kiwi seem to have had this morning, how anxious would you be, how nervous would you be watching these boats fly around at these sort of speeds? Well, we, we are all prepared with that. We all have a second wing, and... Uh, but you need a full team, like 60 or 80 people working on the boat right away to get it done. And honestly, the Kiwi have done a fantastic job uh, to get back on course. It's, um, it's an amazing job they have done. And for sure, we're all anxious of basically how to do it. So we got to pad that last tack. The VAR was slightly out of our range, out of our range of the camera, which I'm sure the cameramen are having a hard time out there too. And it's pouring rain right now. Uh, Clearly, the Brits had a slower attack, and the Kiwis literally just looped right around the outside of them. And now they're both in a bit of a pinching contest, going to only 22, 23 knots. So Ainsley's trying to stay on the high side. Look, at, they're both going slow right now. They're trying to stay out of the wing wash of the, of the Kiwis, who skid sideways right there. A little bit of a break for Ainsley's. The Kiwis got high on their foils and skidded sideways. skid sideways a little bit. So the race very much on right now. The Kiwis have taken the lead and that was down to this tack from Land Rover BAR and Sir Ben Ainsley's crew. Very smooth foiling tack by, by the Kiwis and Land Rover BAR again that that Achilles heel of theirs is is maybe not the foil stability and plugging. Then not only did they plug, but then they kind of flew the holes quite high coming out of the tack. That's all it needed. Oh, whoa! Easy life, still boys. Well, if you like a roller coaster, you'd like to be on one of those right now. Still a few more legs to go. Now it's Ainsley's turn to kind of press the Kiwis maybe into making a mistake. Kiwis clearly had a game plan here of just push them around and see and wait for the chance to pass. It's worked so far, but you know what? It can go the other way too. Still plenty left in the race. Lots more to come. Four more legs. Kiwis in front, rounding the gate and looking to stay up, out of the water, nice and clean. Very effective maneuvering this time around and barely a flicker of instability. The Brits, similarly. Yep. yep. Good rounding, kept the noses clean. Picking up good pace as well. So Ben Ainsley's crew here. No time to be lost. No opportunities yep. left out there because Another defeat here would really sink them into the pit. 3-0 down in a best-of-nine series already. Currently, we know they've got to win five of the next seven. 
against the New Zealanders. That is a very, very tough ask. I'm not sure this rain squall has quite let up out there. Bruno, we can see the boats again from the land, so it's let up a little bit. Does it look like it possibly, a lot of times as a squall comes through, it actually gets lighter air on the other side of it. Is there any sign that the breeze might be letting up? Uh, not exactly. I think it's the same. The, the squall is gone, but uh, it um, it still seems like a you know sort of England type of weather. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it never rains in France, says the Frenchman. Exactly. It's always sunny. <laughs> That's why all the British go on holiday there. Pushing the limits here. Ainsley's doing exactly what Team New Zealand did the first lap and a half. He's just following him in right now. A little bump drafting if you were a car race fan. Just push him into making a mistake. And the problem is the Kiwis have shown they don't make a lot of mistakes. Very low error count from Peter Burling, Glenn Ashby, Blair Tuke, all members of this crew who are sharing their duties out, it seems, and profiting as a result of that. They have a very good system of shared responsibility. Organization, the control, the calm amidst the chaos is something to behold, isn't it? It really is. And Burling jumped into his cockpit there and immediately reached down and pushed a button. I'd be interested to know what he actually pushed. He reached down very quickly, but you can also see how hard it is for these guys to physically get across the boat in these conditions without flipping on, like we saw Dean Barker do a little wipeout yesterday. Well, that's quite a discrepancy on the flight time. So in these sort of conditions, to be managing to zip around the race course with only 1.5% of the time with your hulls touching the water, that is going some from the New Zealanders, particularly with their spare wing. Quite a change from the British boat. This is a moment to go. Almost lost Ben over the back, over the back beam there. That would be bad. Bad. That falls under the I mean, back. This is the master of understatement <laughs> sitting alongside me today. It's a day to dig in, grind it out somehow or other. New Zealand is looking better and better. Very strong in light air and just as accomplished when the breeze is up. Not their best tack on the Kiwi boat coming out of that corner with a little lead to with a little lead right now, but here's what happens. Now that's, that's what happens when you trip and fall into your into your back beam, I think. Your foot goes through the very, very light fairing. Fairing is taking a beating today on all the boats, I, I might add. This is where his foot went through. New Zealand is tacking on that ley line, the ideal line to get through the gate without any further maneuvers. That's what the yellow line is there for, to guide the likes of you and me. And they will have all the software and the data on board to help them out as well as they navigate these extremely testing conditions and choppy waters. Come now, Andy. 
Great rounding from New Zealand and the Brits have a bit of work to do here, Ken. Yeah, this is, is it beyond them now? The stretch happens. They round that weather mark, and one boat's going 25 knots, and the other boat's going 40 knots, and you don't have to be a mathematician to figure out that the lead extends very quickly. Boundary coming into view for Emirates Team New Zealand. Bit of a splashdown. Gives you an idea of how hard it is, even for the, the most practiced, what, who looks to be the most smoothest on the water right now. My mark, my mark has got issues, so I'm not going to be talking much. Something he's got issues, he said. On Burling said he has issues, he's not going to be talking much. Just trying to get down in one here. Down in one, getting down in one. Trying to pace up a clip for 38. Yeah. There's Peter Burling. More pressure coming. Straight through. Straight through. Yeah. Straight through. Sounds like they're dealing with some complications, but my goodness me, if this is them. Good pressure coming, so we're happy. Coping with trouble, Ken, then they can be very happy when, with the way they're handling it all. Even the exposure to water, having those guys down, you know, just, just in, potentially injuring a guy, having them down so tucked away in those cockpits. Whoops. Oh, it's a wet one. Shower. Don't wear white. <laughs> the linen shirt. <laughs> Maybe not the best choice today. <laughs> Sorry, it should be laughing. That's our angle there. Into the final gate. And the New Zealanders are tearing across the water towards victory, towards a 3-0 advantage in the Challenger playoff semi-finals. The writing may be on the wall for the British crew because Peter Burling and co are in commanding form right now. Third victory of the series. Kiwi flags raised. And if that's them coping with trouble, then the rest of the fleet better watch out. Let's get this board down and then get out of here before we rest. They want the quick exit. And the British have slowed right up. Yeah, a couple of the British oh, are just kind of dogging it in now, right now, and just preserving their ah. energy. Ugh, there's a spent group who have to be demoralized, okay, off to a good lead. A couple little splashes. The racing no. against a quick I've boat, the combination the did not add up perfectly for this guy. Well, it just got tougher for Saben Ainsley. 3-0 down, okay, so best of nine. Back, yeah. First to five race wins, move through to the challenger final. They've got to win okay, five Charlie. of the remaining six. It's easy uh, to say. Got to need a new cover for my mic. What happened? You know what happened to Land Rover BAR? They lost by so much. That's what some people are going to look at when they read their newspaper tomorrow morning. This is absolutely the right call: is to just preserve the boys, preserve the assets, limp on in. There's no reason to keep the hammer down. A group that knows they had a nice little jump. You can see by the look on their faces. So put it in context for us now, Ken. From here on in, they need five of the next six race wins against the Kiwis. Ben Ainsley, as we know, was part of that team, the Oracle Team USA comeback in San Francisco four years ago. Would, would this challenge be looking like an even stiffer one? You'd have to say, I mean, at least equal to it, whatever. If Sir Ben had a speech that got the Oracle team going in that San Francisco series, he better break out that speech again because uh, it would be darn over. close. The Kiwis look strong, just like the Kiwis look, hey, the Kiwis look insurmountable in, okay. in San Francisco as well. So 